every day is a great day, but when it's a new day, then it's kind of fun because you get to start over. And more often than not, you don't remember what was yesterday. We're just worried about what was or what is today. You know, when I come out to record these evotionals, you know, the devotional time of sharing a video and talking to Jesus and listening to what he would say to me, often he makes me aware of my surroundings. He makes me to sit down, to be still, to have a cup of coffee, to consider when I look around the plants, the variety that I have, the flowering ones, the cactus, I think I have one. The fact that I overwatered this guy and about drowned him. The way that he has caused this porch to blossom and each one of these plants requiring a different care and a different need. Like my pine trees that one time I left in the window and the sunlight had bounced off it and burned it and how it's recovering how it needs lots of water sometimes, and how my wandering Jew, when I overwater it, it wilts. And yet, when I overwater a coleus, it explodes with growth. You know, God sat me down, and does often, daily, to look at the plants and to consider them and how they change with the sun, that as the sun moves through the sky, the plant seems to follow it and want to always put its face or its favorite position forward to catch the sun's rays. And that showed me a lot about that, you know, how we ought to be that way. We ought to be like the plants where we see his face and we want to constantly follow where he is. Because when we took, take our eyes off of the sun, literally, the sunshine or the son of God, then we get distracted and we might even think that we're following the sun <laughs> and we might be looking at a different kind of light because I know we have grow lights and you can even do hydroponics and grow indoors but all of my plants while I grew them in the winter inside once I brought them outside and I put them in their pots and I gave them the right amount of sunshine and then I just let them go and I water them and let them grow according to what the weather brings, the sunshine and the wind and the different temperatures. They've exploded in growth. And I think that's true about you and I. That sometimes we need to let go and let God be the one who waters us, who prunes us, who causes us to grow in our pots and in our settings and places us in the right position outside of the inside like in the church to the positions that he's placed us so that we could show as we follow the sun what it is that God has done in us which is in reality our testimony our witness our sharing of what and who God is in us as we seek to follow the Son of God like the sunshine because the scripture says the Son of God is like and done to the Son of Righteousness rising with healing in his wings there's a beautiful picture there that makes us aware just like the plants are of where the Sun is and as it moves through the sky so too, we ought to change the focus of our attention. Wherever the sun goes, Jesus, we ought to follow him and not worry about <laughs> if there's clouds in the sky or if there's ants running around, which there aren't right now, or mosquitoes or anything else that might be buzzing because we 
need to follow the Son and let Him, the Master Gardener, take care of us. In daily life today, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world, your Lamb shall be without blemish, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses, wherein they shall eat it. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. The blood of sprinkling, Christ our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. We have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will of God. You know, isn't that kind of neat that Jesus, before the foundation of the world, before you were born, before I, not you, before you were born, before I was born, before any of us were even conceived of, had already laid out the plan of salvation that we would be saved from ourselves and from our sin, and that God had planned out and coordinated your entire life, spread out in the universe, all designed to bring you to a place of knowing and being reassured that he is in control. Wow. <laughs> I mean, wow. That's kind of amazing. But then beyond that, he didn't say, oh, well, I'm just going to save you and be on your merry way. Hip, hip, hooray. You know, you're on your way. But he also said, oh, and you too, likewise, as I have laid out my plans for you, and I laid out my plan of salvation that I should suffer and die. Oh my God. That we should not live according to the lusts of men, the lusts of the world, the lust of the eye, the pride of life. We shouldn't get caught up in these things that are around us, but we should experience and come into the presence of God to find the will of God for our life. Which, when I look at the plants, I think, if that's God's will, I want it. Don't you? I have trodden the winepress alone. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? And who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? He saw there was no man, and wondered there was no intercessor. Therefore his arm himself brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness it sustained him. Who his own self bare our sins in his own body on the tree, being made a curse for us? O oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm hath gotten him the victory. Having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly triumphing over them. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. O oh, my soul, thou hast trodden down strength. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. You know, I can only speak about what I experience, and I can only share with what I know. And when I talk about hearing Jesus, or seeing Jesus, or knowing Jesus, or walking with Him, I only share those things that I know. I only share things I haven't experienced. Because to share that which I hadn't experienced would be, you could say faith, but it could also be considered lying. Because if you haven't experienced it, then you don't know what you're talking about. But once you have experienced it, there is no doubt in your mind about who, what, where, and why Jesus is who he is and how much he loves you. Once you have that, you don't have to worry about what other people are doing. You've got something that they want, and no matter how hard they try to convince you otherwise, if you take the time to get back, get to the place of 
relating again with Jesus about all that he's brought you through and you remember it and you think about it, then, man, what a song you are to the world that God is singing and causing you to be his witness in all of salvation that he's provided for those people around you that might be not at first responding to the song you're singing, but sooner or later they'll learn the tune.